Some of you have been asking me about a recent BBC Panorama documentary focusing on the menopause and particularly doctors who have a big following and what they're selling and what they're doing. And I've been asked a little bit about the Louise Newsom situation, so I'm going to talk about that with the caveat that I'm not giving medical advice. So the first thing to realize is, again, I am not a medical doctor and I'm not going to talk about the science of HRT. There are better people than that than me. What I'm going to try and address in this short video, hopefully short, is whether this is some kind of witch hunt or whether there's genuine grounds for concern and also maybe a lesson about taking social media doctors at face value and maybe when we should be more you know, critical in our thinking about that. So to give you a little recap, so Dr. Louise Newson is a GP in the UK. Uh, she's very popular on traditional media, BBC and ITV, and also on social media, where she's sometimes called Dr. Menopause and advocates for very high doses of hormone replacement therapy, or HRT. However, in recent days, she's come under investigation from the Care Quality Commission in the UK after concerning reports emerged from her clinic about bad side effects and lack of follow-up on women prescribed very, prescribed very high doses of HRT, sometimes up to three times the recommended upper license limit. Um, some of these complications are particularly unpleasant, including thickening of the womb lining, which is worrying because it can be potentially a precursor of cancer. Uh, she's also lost her accreditation from the British Menopause Society, and the investigation is ongoing. But we should listen to what some of those patients say in the documentary. Paula was prescribed oestrogen patches with progesterone tablets by Dr. Newson. She found that her symptoms got worse, not better. So I went back for the follow-up appointment and I explained about the anxiety and how things were and she doubled the HRT prescription then. There was no conversation of this being a high dose. I thought, well, okay, she's saying take more. So I took more. After that, how did you feel? It, things got really, really, really bad. I was physically um, angry, I couldn't sleep, um, so I started drinking in order to try to get me to sleep. Um, I had to move out because of the arguments and the fighting um, with my husband and my young son was privy to that. I couldn't see any way forwards and I ended up, I was suicidal. Paula also experienced spells of heavy uncontrolled bleeding. She says she entered a cycle of her dose being upped and her symptoms getting worse. Hot flushes all the time, relentless, um, anxiety, couldn't sleep didn't sleep for days, morning sickness. Over the course of eight months, Rachel's oestrogen dose was increased to 300 micrograms, three times the maximum licensed dose. Her progesterone dose, that second hormone used to protect her womb, didn't increase. In fact, it was halved. Then Rachel experienced new symptoms, including severe pelvic pain. So these are pretty concerning reports. And look, this is not to say, and I'm not getting into whether hormone replacement therapy is good or bad it's probably good for some people there's good evidence is good for some people but like any medication or any medical intervention whoever prescribes it should also be aware that there can be side effects it won't work for everyone and a responsible doctor would follow up on this however this is actually what happened when patients tried to come back to Dr. Newson. Thank you for your email and your clinical query which we want to address as effectively as possible. A 10 minute advice call with one of our pharmacists or nurses, 50 pounds. A follow up video or telephone consultation with one of our pharmacists or nurses, 165 pounds. With one of our doctors, 230 pounds. I mean, the thing is, you've detailed the tough time you've been having and you get almost a pro forma back. Now this is a really important point. Dr. Louise Newson is not running a charity. She's running a very expensive business. Some of the complainants spent thousands going there. A consultation on average was £230 for a starting price, okay? And people are going back many, many times. This was not done with adequate follow-up, it appears. And this is probably why the Care Quality Commission are looking into it. If you have patients suffering potentially severe side effects and you've given them very, very high doses beyond what we know is safe, there's a responsibility on a medical practitioner to only do that if they are going to be responsible and follow up on it. That you suddenly come back and say, oh, we'll see you again if you pay more money. It, it leaves a bad taste in one's mouth. And unfortunately, this is something we should be mindful of. You see doctors on social media and you trust them because they're on TV all the time or they have a lovely Instagram presence and they're telling you what you want to hear. But if they are profiteering off that, if they have a business interest in that, it is a conflict of interest. And sometimes 
patient care is going to suffer from that as well, which may be happening here. We won't know until the investigations are concluded. But it certainly is concerning that you would have patients with side effects like this and you wouldn't really be urgently wanting to see them again and see what's going on. Again, these people are operating for profit. They are not your standard NHS GPs. They are their own businesses. The other thing that's really concerning, by the way, when we talk about bleeding and abnormal cells, there's a reason why that's worrying and where Newsom departs from her colleagues as well. Rachel says she spent more than £2,300 at Newsom Health. Her GP referred her to NHS specialists, including Professor Janice Reimer, who diagnosed endometrial hyperplasia. Endometrial hyperplasia is, is, is when you're starting to get changes in the cells of the lining of the womb, and those, those changes can eventually lead to cancer of the womb. Professor Reimer attributes Rachel's hyperplasia to her treatment at Newson Health. I've never ever prescribed that dose of oestrogen to, to anybody. That dose of, of progesterone would not be enough to counteract the effect of oestrogen on the lining of her womb. So while HRT can benefit some women, it does increase the risks of certain cancers because again, these usually are hormonally mediated cancers. That includes things like forms of breast cancer, forms of ovarian cancer and endometrial or womb cancer. So if you have a patient who's bleeding abnormally or their cells are going a bit funny, that's usually a very concerning sign that you should take seriously. This is not to bash HRT, which obviously works for a lot of people. It's to say that like any medication or any treatment, it can have side effects, which weirdly enough is something that Newson didn't really seem to accept. Dr. Newson says there's no evidence to link higher doses of oestrogen to an increased risk of long-term harm. She says harm is more likely to be caused by failing to give women the doses they need. However, her prescribing has raised alarm bells with some fellow specialists. So again, I am not going to talk about benefits and risks of HRT because it's not my area. But I'm going to address a question I've been asked a lot about this. Is this a witch hunt? No, almost certainly not. This is someone who is prescribing very high doses and not following up on patients. Now, they're very popular and a lot of people will default to saying, oh, this must be a witch hunt, particularly because it's about women's issues. But more likely than not, this is a genuine investigation based on patient complaints for worrying signs that weren't followed up. Again, this woman is not operating a charity. I can't speak to her motivations. I think from what she said, she genuinely believes that high dose HRT is a panacea and you should just increase the dosage if you don't get an effect. That's medically quite irresponsible. But there's other things that Newson has said that concern me outside of that space, because obviously I don't work in that space, but I do work in the cancer space quite a bit. For example, this comment was sent to me recently by a follower after I was asked about this and obviously concerning for that reason, which we've already raised. But the other thing is this is a comment Dr. Newson made on a video by a well-known cancer quack, where she essentially states that all disease is caused by diet. This is garbage. This implies to me this is someone who parted ways with evidence-based medicine a long time ago. And unfortunately, I think that's ideological capture. Someone believes they're right, believes they have the cure, therefore, you know, they, they're justified in not following standard guidelines. That would be my read on it. I don't know, the investigation will tell us, but I have outlined very briefly, too long I think, but in this video where these concerns are coming from and if you want to know more about that, there's great people, I'll link to some of the things that you can listen to and talk to, but honestly, we'll have to see how the investigation comes out. But there's a really important lesson aside from all that. The reason people are getting so emotional about this and so um, angry in some ways is more about the fact that they have a parasocial link. They believe this person, they're telling them what they want to hear, they trust them. They trust them because they're on TV. They trust them because they've got a good social media presence. They trust them because they say reassuring things that they've got the cure for you. And sometimes they don't. And sometimes the cure isn't perfect. It will work for some people, not for others. And there's no one size fits all in most of medical science. So I think there's a really important lesson here is that evidence matters. And no matter how much you like someone, once they go off the evidence piece, they're no longer practicing science and they might start causing harm. I mean, I wrote about a lot of different doctors and scientists who've done that over the years in the book because it's really, really common. My suspicion is this is probably another example of that. We'll see. I hope this has been helpful.